Hello tankers and tankettes, welcome back to the resumed supporters week and we're going to kick off with this Conqueror game from Game Glitch. So the Conqueror, I haven't played this in a while and uh, the last time I did play it, it was before it became HD. It used to be known for having a particularly squashy turret. You went from the Carnarvon, which basically had the Centurion turret, which at that time was fairly tough, to this thing with quite a squashy turret but a very very nice gun. And that's just completely reversed because the Carnarvon turret these days isn't so tough because the Centurion turret isn't so tough. And yet this thing does have a tough turret so the world's gone mad, it's all gone topsy-turvy. Anyway, he's got very, very good matchmaking. There's only two tier nines per side and there's no artillery to worry about. So potentially, this could be rather nice. Now there's an enemy uh, walker bulldog, a, a black dog, if you like, that's just decided to... I don't know. I don't know. Trying to get themselves an early spotting medal or something. Um, is there a mission for spotting lots of enemy tanks? I, I have no idea. Anyway, either way, that is potentially quite a nasty tank out of the game. And they've actually got one on their own team who is also going to prove to be fairly effective. So that really was a waste. It really was. So it drives to the usual heavy corner, you quite often see people going there, but Game Glitch decides to do something a bit different. And he says himself that maybe in retrospect uh, he wouldn't have gone here, because it's going to prove a little bit costly in terms of hit points. Now he's found one enemy tank, the Oni, and that wasn't the derp gun. Now he's managing to punish this guy in return, which is nice, but he's not done taking damage yet, unfortunately. So that's, uh, what was that, the Challenger takes a pot shot, the STA-1 realises that he's got shots, perfect shots into the side armor. This thing's got a decent upper front plate, and as I've said, the turret's pretty good as well, but uh, it's not great in armor in other ways, and the lower front plate is just also weak. So another hit from the Oni, and uh, he's down to about 60% health already. So, like I said, I th he's... He acknowledged himself that this, this was not the smartest uh, initial move he could make. However, it's bought him here. He's been able to kill the STA and he can now use this position, which I've not really seen used very often. And this is where that Conqueror turret's going to come in very useful. Because he can basically sit here and be hull down. So, yeah. This, I mean, it, it, you could do this in like T30, T29, T32. But they have uh, commander's hatches potentially that would be weaker. They do, however, have the, uh, the gun depression for it. But facing this E75, he can quite confidently just show his turret and get bounces. And I remember when doing this in a Conqueror would have been an invitation to a spanking where you would have just had your turret penned over and over. But uh, no, no, these days you can quite confidently do that. So he's shaved off a big chunk of that E75's health, and now he's got this scenario where, well, he can either go for the E75 or the Challenger, and either way, the other one is probably going to shoot him. And he decides on balance to go for the E75, which is the smart move, because he can take out the one with the higher damage gun, whereas the Challenger, of course, ha only has the 17-pounder, so it's not really going to do that much damage. And the Challenger, instead of backing off, does this instead and actually gets rammed to death by a conqueror. And that wasn't even particularly low, uh, particularly high speed. So that just shows you how good the challenger is, doesn't it? So next up is this VKA, and the thing with this armor is, like I said, the lower front plate's weak, but you can get it in somebody's face, and they can't hit that lower front plate. So it's a very good tank for, like bullying lower tiers and getting in somebody's face like that, but on flat ground generally, if they have an opportunity to hit your sidearm or your lower front plate, they're probably going to pen you. This thing does not have fantastic armor all round. So, they have disposed of most of the enemy team, but the enemy team has disposed of most of their team as well. However, they've still got a fair number of tanks left. So that Panther II is on the cap, there's an IS-3 spotting, and that's a nice hit, however, the IS-3 is going to get very unlucky, as we'll see in just a second. Now he's going to go round, assuming he can take the hit. He can take the hit, but just a fraction 
of a second before he dies. The Panther 2 actually shoots the IS-3, who then burns out. So that's unlucky. Meanwhile, well, the T-34s, uh, one of the T-34s rather, has died. And he's taken another couple of hits himself. The Mod 1 was firing 8 PCR and took out his ammo rack. And the Tiger 2 got in hit also. But being now on 5 kills, I imagine Game Glitch was rather keen on getting a top gun. So he tries to side scrape a bit, which is not... Yeah, the armor's not great on this tank. The, the side armor is not usually sufficient for doing that. But against the Tiger 2 it might have worked. However, the Tiger just backed off. And then RNG strikes. That was a really low roll. That was, what, 328? The average damage on these shells is 400. So RNG, ah, there we go. The Tiger 2 takes him. RNG just built him out of the top gun and basically got him killed, as sometimes happens. But in this case, it doesn't matter so much because we're going to win. The WZ trying to defend their cap completely flubs his shot and that means their own black dog can get that last kill so no top gun and it was all thanks to rng and that is going to be th the theme of this episode is rng so despite that lack of a top gun he was just missing that one kill that was still an ace tanker and a high caliber because he did quite a lot of damage and he actually got elite xp there you go 13 1337 i almost said 13037 no no, no, definitely 1,337. You can see, uh, actually, Super Pershing was second place on his team, so that wasn't too bad at all. So, 5.7k damage done. 17 shots fired, 16 hits, 16 pens. It's a very nice gun indeed, this. Uh, 1,590 damage blocked, so his armor worked sometimes, but for those that knew where to shoot, uh, yeah, it's not a hard tank to hurt. So, did I mention this replay is going to be about... RNG. And where would we be without some artillery? Now, this is Armorama in the infamous Le Fay, the uh, tier 5 premium French arty that is generally acknowledged to be tier for tier one of the most overpowered arties in the game because it's basically an old style unnerfed Burt. It's got a very quick reload, terrible splash, but uh, it's also got a, a pretty good arc, although I don't know if the shell arc is as good as the Burt. Now, it's not as fast, it's on the hull of a B1, but that brings its own advantages. There are occasions when a lower tier uh, tank or a scout or whatever will come up to you and start confidently shooting your hull, only to discover that you've got that B1 hull armour. Now, of course, it's really not difficult to hurt a Lefer, you just shoot the gun shield instead, which has very little armour, but a lot of people in their scout tanks just auto-aim and are unpleasantly surprised when their shells do nothing. So this is going to be, uh, well, something of a, a like, it's a very RNG game because it's an artillery game, but it, it's, it's the result and the ending that concern us particularly. In terms of a lot of the actual gameplay, well, it's an artillery game. And I was actually kind of tempted to go and grab a Stornoway Gazette. I do have one from last week because I was hoping there might be some particularly Gazette take on the fact that an oil rig crashed into our island, and it's actually still there. They've managed to get some uh, uh, salvage people on board to assess the condition of the thing, but uh, yeah, no, it's still quite firmly stuck. But unfortunately, the most Gazette thing in that article was a picture with a caption about, you know, two of Dalmore's cheap take a view of the the oil rig or whatever it was it was it for some reason we needed a picture of some sheep looking at an oil rig yeah i i don't know i don't know just just gazette things just gazette things but as for the article itself it was disappointingly you know proper solid boring journalism it, it, it wasn't very gazette at all i was quite disappointed so, anyway, I will notice from the team list that the enemies have uh, an ARL and a heavy tank number 6, while our own team only has top tier mediums. In fact, the only heavy on this team is a T1 heavy. So, initially, it looks like the enemy team is going great guns, especially their ARL. And then that happens. Now, that wasn't a 500+, plus. that was a, a, a 400 
shot from uh, Armor Armor, so that was a, a penetrating high roll, and somebody else hit him just a moment before, so it, it showed up as a 500 plus damage figure. But either way, yes, that is one ARL out of the picture. That had to be a, ton of, uh, a turret penetration from the front. So, okay. <laughs> okay, the T1 disappears, and uh, Armor Armor takes a guess, and guesses correctly, so there's two kills. Okay, so that's evened the odds a little bit. However, in the north, things are not looking so good. It's uh, a bunch of tanks rushing. There are only two tanks there, a Fury and a Matilda. So he does notice, he turns his gun, and <laughs> that poor little Covenanter. Well, RNG decides the Covenanter will live. And actually, just looking at that shell, I'm pretty sure the, co the Covenanter's using the three-inch derp gun. Anyway, the Matilda's down, the Fury isn't going to last much longer, they're all just completely wrecking him. So, another shell, and, oh no, that also is a miss, so fairly standard so far, you know, this is just, this is just what happens in artillery, even, even something like this. Uh, but then, <laughs> takes the Hellcat. So clearly, the secret to uh, trying to get kills with this thing, you know, that's, that's twice now that's happened, is you wait until they disappear, and then you fire. Oh, okay. Fire on the Rudy, the Rudy burns. Okay, well, that was very RNG, but you know, these things happen. Surely that won't happen again in this game. That's what we call foreshadowing in the trailer, by the way. <laughs> so, let's let's aim at one of these poor hapless tier fours. No, that one was a miss. Well, you know, the thing with the Lafayette is you really only have to wait a couple of seconds for the next shell. This is one of the reasons why it's regarded as being somewhat overpowered. Oh, look! Another fire. That one wasn't even... That, that was like in the tracks or something. But no, no, T-80 burns out as well. And then he follows up with a one-shot on the Covenant for good measure. So that's a top gun. Yep. Okay, well. Well, this this is this is looking filthier by the minute. But uh, thanks to this filthy, filthy RNG artillery play, they might actually win this one. It looked like it was going to be a runaway loss, and then suddenly Armor Armor started expertly clicking on things, and now it's completely turned around. And this is all with an AFK Hetzer. They've been a tank down the entire time. So, what's left is a Hellcat, a heavy tank number six, and uh, the enemy artillery. And that Hellcat is oh, well, he's not in a good place. No, now he's now now he's in he, he's in a better place. It's for the best. It's for the best. No tears, Hellcat. No tears. Only dreams now. Only dreams. So the heavy tank. I mean, uh, he's got barely any health left. He's he's doomed. He must surely know he's doomed. Um, even if, even if, armor armor. Can't get him. The M7 will, surely. And actually, that was incredibly lucky that he didn't kill the... Uh, like, he just left him on a fraction of health. There we go, 26. But, again, it's this reload. It's this reload. So, what can I say? Radley Walters. A dirty, filthy Radley Walters. And I know Redman36 has actually sent me, like, similar Lefair games. He, in particular, will appreciate this replay. But, uh, yeah. Like I said, the ending, we've got the Radley Walters, but we're not done yet. There's two artillery left alive, and it's an arty failed platoon. There's a Tier 4 and a Tier 2. Now watch the team messages. Watch what's going to happen next. Enemy AMX105 killed... Enemy uh, Gizbz Mark Six. Yes, it's a Gizbz. It's one of those. Yes. Yeah. So the artillery team kills his platoon mate. Can you guess what's going to happen next? Now I was actually watching the messages and thinking, yeah, oh, is he? I mean, he's, he's clearly, you know, was this, you know, was he just like dissatisfied with his platoon mate's performance, or was this like a murder suicide pact? And it's possibly going to turn out to have been a murder-suicide pact because any second now that AMX is also going to drown himself. So, and there it is. <laughs> that was a very artillery ending to a very artillery game. So, that was an ace tanker, Radley Walters, top gun and high caliber, and it was just filthy. And Jim himself acknowledges that it was just filthy. 
Now, I could not tell you why he was playing the artillery. Um, possibly, uh, this artillery even, possibly he was doing an arty mission for, uh, it would have had to have been either the, the Stug or the, the HTC. So I think the cutoff is uh, tier 5 for the HTC. But uh, either way, yes, pure filth. Pure and utter filth. But in a way, the next replay is, well, it's 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 filth, but in a different way. And it's very, very RNG, but again, in a different way. And it's filth in a different way because it's the T-54. This is I Be The One True Nub, and having said it's filth, it's not like this is going to be one of these T-54 replays where it's somebody firing exclusively heat shells. No, it's it's going to be filth in a very different way. So we're on Muravanka, win, uh, win, <laughs> with, well, I, I was trying to mash together with and in and out came win, which is actually already a word, so I don't know, that was like a treble fail on the part of my brain there. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, it's a tier 10 game is what I was trying to get at, and there was initially a, a bat chat coming with him, but then the bat chat just kind of slams on the brakes and holds position. And meanwhile, that's just left, I be the one true nub, and this T-54 uh, Mod 1, all alone in the forest, with some enemy tier 10s. And ordinarily this would be concerning, but you know, it's a T-54, and things are going to get silly, because it is indeed a T-54. Now the bat chat has uh, at least put himself in a position where potentially he could shoot stuff if they try and rush. I be the one true nub. And there's also an E50M, who I mean he's going to do some damage, but given that he's an E50M and he's very top tier and it's a very good uh, tier 10 medium tank, he is remarkably passive. Now it might just be that uh, artillery is on his mind, but uh, anyway. So, this is the point where everything goes a bit Pete Tong. It's not looking good, is it? Except this is a T-54. <laughs> Look at this. Now, he's helping himself by backing up against this house. And that means he's limiting the number of things that can fire at him. But once they started that rush, I thought he's dead. He's surely dead. There's no way he can survive this. But, no, those guys that are sitting back there are actually shooting these things. Now 1390 has uh, emptied his clip and now he's reloading so he's not really that much of a threat. There's still a bat chat and a T-110 E5 though and they actually didn't join in with the rush so there's still them to deal with. This IS-3 by the way shooting APCR I would guess that's because he's... Oh there's the E5! I would guess that's because he's um, using a, a stock gun because that's definitely a stock turret. So, that E5 is a bit of a problem. He's still got the IS-3 ahead of him, though the IS-3 is less of a problem, and whoa, 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 oh, oh, oh no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Just T-54 things. You see what I mean? Any other medium tank, and I think he'd be dead right now. And there's the bad chap, and there's the kill. It's just ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. It is, in its own way, more ridiculous than the last game. Oh, the last game was an artillery game. So, yeah, I don't know what to say about that other than just T-50 thought things. It's, it's just... I have really no words. So, uh, this has been a really fast match. It's only just approaching the three minute mark. They've lost half their own team, but the enemy team is down to just a few tanks now. I want you to pay attention to the minimap, by the way, and the E50M. We know there are no tanks left over on this side. We know exactly where every single enemy tank that's remaining is. And yet the E50 decides to take a leisurely drive up the zero line because reasons. Like I said, from the position where he was, he did do some damage. If he hadn't been there, as it turns out, uh, maybe I'd be the one true nub would be dead right now because there would have been that bit less like fire support. But I'm not going to pretend like that is the best E50M driver ever, just based on the fact that uh, he was on the K line to begin with, and now he's driving all the way around the edge of the map essentially. So. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, knows how to shoot at least moderately well, but situational awareness, nil. Anyway. So there's just a couple of tanks left now. Uh, the I mean, they're doing some damage, but the Waffle Panzer is low enough health that uh, IB the One True Nub is unlikely to get much uh, damage out of him. Because if he does hit him, it'll be the kill, which would be nice. But he's also being cautious because he's only on 28 health. And, well, his armor has held up so far, but, uh, yeah, you only you only want to push your luck so far. So he gets the tracking shot on the Jaegeru, and then Artillery very helpfully splashes the friendly Bulldog. Well done, Artillery. And there we go. Final kill, because why not? Now, I'm not sure where he could have picked up an extra kill for a Top Gun in this one, but still. That was ridiculous. That was completely ridiculous. Ace tanker, steel wall, and a Spartan medal for bouncing that E5 shot. And you can bet he's going to be top of his team because he will have gotten a lot of spotting damage as well. So there we go, 1460 base XP with 3448 damage done and 5 kills. And the next place was the Walker Bulldog who also must have had a bunch of spotting damage. So let's take a look at, uh, oh, oh, 3.5k damage blocked, 4,900 spotting damage. So, so, there we go. That's not bad for five minutes work. T-54, everybody, it's not only the best tier 9 medium tank, it's also the best tier 9 heavy tank, and it's the best tier 9 scout tank as well. There you go. I actually debated whether to put this ahead or behind of that uh, Le Fair replay and in the end I decided that actually this one's more ridiculous and I think it's more ridiculous by a margin <laughs> and I hope you thought so too. So hopefully you have enjoyed these and if you have you can leave any comments below, you can hit the like button, you can sub to my channel if you haven't already and as always stay tuned for more.